Hello everyone, Neil Shep here and welcome to How Do You Make Money, where I interview entrepreneurs and talk about how they make money by breaking down their product, marketing and sales strategy. And today, super excited to be talking with Alex Chisnell, who helps ambitious brands and driven entrepreneurs tell their story via the power of podcasting. He founded his pod podcast agency, Podpreneur, after the success of his own podcast, Screw It, Just Do It which changed his life. Now, before we turn this to Alex, I, in the background, I'm gonna be putting together a diagram that summarizes how Alex makes money today. Um, and I'll be sharing that towards the end of the interview. So Alex, thanks so much for doing this. We, we finally made it happen. I know, it's because I don't look at emails. <laughs> Glad to be here, pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Good podcasting, yeah, no, great to have you. So look, let, take us through your your story of how you ended up launching a podcasting agency as well as a, a, a training platform, I guess. Um, yeah, so I guess for me, as with a lot of people in podcasting, it was a podcast that I listened to that you know got me on this road, which is called How I Built This by Guy Raz, produced by NPR. Mm -hmm. And they would essentially speak to entrepreneurs who had built their businesses and, and kind of dig down into how they, how they did it. And I loved it, absolutely loved it. And just thought, not necessarily that I could do something better, but I could do something different. So my angle, and at the time I was working with Virgin Startup, just to give it a bit of context, which is Richard Branson's not-for-profit. Um, that helps entrepreneurs um, get funding and mentoring for their business. So I just thought, I actually want to speak to people who are still in the trenches, effectively building their businesses so I could relate to them. Because as how I built this went on, I just found that there's only so many billionaire stories that you can listen to who probably retired 20 years ago before the internet was even born and before social media was even a thing. So even though some of those lessons were timeless, a lot of them weren't even relevant anymore. So I, I, I kind of leveraged what I was doing, which is with Virgin Startup and the, and the, the amazing network that I started building through that business. Um, and the proposal was originally to make a podcast for Virgin Startup. And it was just, without going into a really long story, it was an absolute ball ache to go through all the red tape to get it approved. And I literally on one Friday went from it getting approved with Virgin Startup to going to virgin.com to getting approval to then getting a third phone call to go, it's now going to Virgin PR. It's now going to the head of the Virgin group. And I'm literally just like that. Are you having a laugh? This is just so painful. And uh, they came back and they went, okay, so they, they loved the idea. Um, and I'd recorded like six episodes. Um, they loved the idea, loved the podcast. Um, all you need to do to get it approved is re-record every single episode in the style of all of Virgin's existing podcasts Oh and actually do it with a completely different theme and angle because we're going to launch a podcast exactly the same as that anyway. And of course, four years on, have they launched a podcast like that? No, they haven't. And I'm so glad that I didn't hang around uh, waiting for them to get approval. And at the time I was just thinking, yeah, wow, launch a podcast for Virgin. Imagine, you know, the people I could reach out to and all the rest of it. So I decided to call it, screw it, just do it for mm -hmm two obvious reasons. One, because of the whole process that I've been through and two is a nod to my former boss, Richard Branson anyway. <laughs> um, and, you know, just started out on that podcast journey of, of interviewing people, putting those episodes out there. Um, and then people just kept coming to me and asking my advice. I'm going to start a podcast question. I'm going to, I'm starting a podcast question. And I just thought, okay, why don't we just put on a workshop where I answer all these people's questions and I'll charge money for it. And that's what I did. I was in a co-working shared office space. Um, first one put together by Ted Baker, founder Ray Kelvin um, in Bournemouth. And I hosted a workshop that led to another one. And I just really enjoyed that experience of teaching people what I'd learned. And then I just came to a conclusion of like, why am I teaching 12 people in Bournemouth when my podcast is listened to in over 150 countries around the world? Why can't I turn this online? So that then led to me going, actually, and at the time, a lot of there were a lot of changes at Virgin Startup. So they basically cut a long story short. The government made a load of changes, started paying you less money. That's always a great incentive to look at other <laughs> other avenues. So um, I decided to go all in and, and, and launch effectively 
not that I called it that at the time, but a podcast agency and it, and it was creating podcasts uh, for different brands and then for individual entrepreneurs. And off the back of that, We'd, we've done a variety of different services, but based around the same thing of helping people essentially, you know, create and grow a podcast. That's amazing. I love that story. Um, but okay. So before we get into the actual offers and products that you actually have and the prices behind that, give us a sense of the business. How large is the business? And you could, you could say five figures, six figures, seven figures, eight figures, you know, do it that way. Give us Pete, a, a mutual friend, just gave us the number. Um, uh, you could tell us the number of employees. Share as much or as little as you want. Sure. So um, I've just advertising for the second time this year to to grow the team um, because of the podcast we're creating. Then people want to create a second series and a third series. So you've got people on on that recurring model. And then you've got new business coming in. And basically we, we, um, we can cut, you know, yes, we can cope with it. But so, so basically gone from essentially to at the start, me and a PA and a producer, three of us to then graphic designer, uh, another PA podcast coach, uh, now recruiting another producer, um, another podcast strategist, and another PA. So yeah, like eight, nine people that it, wow. that it will be, um, and gone from what was a five-figure business about to become a, a six-figure business pre pre lockdown when literally everything fell off a cliff overnight. Every single person and um, working with some like really big brands like 300 million dollar brands you know to them to then turn around and say come back in a year and me going huh what do you mean come back in a year and of course now i get it big businesses can do that they can literally just put everything on ice and it was like we don't need the new website we don't need the new product launch we don't definitely don't need the new podcast we're just going to keep selling what we've got on the old website because we've just furloughed our entire marketing department you know, and so it just ended up, you know, from me literally thinking, wow, this is really going to take off to now being, you know, going through one hell of a year, like a lot of people did. And one client got me through that entire period, you know, as a five figure business to now um, looking at, a, you know, a multi six figure business that could be a seven figure business by the end of the year. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That, yeah. is, that is some super impressive growth. And where is that? Because obviously I know your business, you've got, you, you, you've broken that down between doing it for clients. So it's the service side of things. It's uh, done with you. So, hey, we're going to support you. You're going to do the work, but we're going to support you and we're going to do it with you. And then there's the course, right? So when you yeah. look at that multi six figure going into seven figure, where does that come from when you look at those three areas? Is it the service done with you or the DIY? Yeah, the, the fast growth is for is is coming from the done for you, because that's like essentially the 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 bigger ticket item. Um and again, people people still tell me that um that I don't charge enough money, you know, and and when I was setting this up um a couple of years ago. I could only find two other people in the UK who were specific podcast agencies. Now, of course, yeah. every agency in their dog goes, Oh yeah, we're a podcast agency. Well, it's like, no, you're not. You're either a social media agency or you're a video agency or you're a marketing agency that goes, we could do podcasts as well. And it's like, yeah. have you got your own podcast? No. So how do you know to help somebody else grow their podcast? You don't. So I, I think that's where I found, you know, where we connected on clubhouse, been so fantastic for me which i know we'll, we'll, we'll get into but it's again just being one of three people in the uk offering that service and getting known for it quite quickly in a very short period of time wow that's impressive um so tell us about your prices for done for you so done for you um goes from one and a half thousand to three and a half thousand plus 
plus VAT. Um, and we were on the cusp. And I think I've, I've increased those prices maybe four times and I was just about to increase them again because I still haven't had pushback on that price. Um, but it just, I don't know, people will probably have a go at me for not putting them up then because, <laughs> because I haven't had pushback, but it was just a nice spot and I had a load of people in the funnel and I just thought, I just, yeah, keep it consistent for the moment. And it was a lot of people just about to sign up. And is that one off or um, like, it, can someone come to you and go, Hey, just can you manage four episodes for me one off or do they, do they have to go on a retainer? No, they, d- they don't have to go on a retainer at all. No, they don't. Okay. Uh, so, so usually it, the, the way the model would work would be, and some people just want to w- launch a series and see what happens. So it's yeah. like, yeah, we'll just launch this as a one-off for you. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously it's, it's in our interest to try and turn that, which, which happened you know, yesterday with an agency that we're working with. We got to number one in the marketing chart. So for a PR agency, how good is that? To be still a bit above, you know, 10 days later, still above Jenna Kutcher, Amy Porterfield, wow. uh, your namesake, um, Eric Sue and Neil Patel, um, you know, above them in the UK right. marketing chart. So for a PR agency, it's pretty powerful to attract new clients and that's their motivation that's for nuts. doing it. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, t- t- give me one secret. <laughs> <laughs> a secret is, is um, okay, so a secret is um, the algorithm works on, which is why somebody new can make a splash amongst the Amy Porterfields and the Jenna Kutchers and the Neil Patels is that the, the, the algorithm base is based on number of new subscribers, number of new downloads, number of new ratings and reviews. Okay. So most people focus on subscribers and downloads, but if you actually focused on getting the ratings and reviews, not only is that great social proof to fuel your marketing, um, it also plays to the strength of the algorithm because nobody else is using Cause it's, t- it's tough to get somebody to review anything these days, isn't it? Without incentivizing them. So we always um, like with the PR agency last week, we got them to include a gift from every single person they'd interviewed. And that was like, say Jamie Lang from candy kittens to um, forgotten a name from flower box to lick paint and all this to all include something as a giveaway and then launch a massive giveaway on social media the day after launch um, to get people to you know rate and review screenshot or tag on social media and again of course instagram's reacting to being tagged and it just yeah wow that's that's a nice secret so basically drive ratings and reviews and just out of interest on what we're uh, since we're on this how many ratings did they, how many reviews got them? So how many reviews did they get in the end? Yeah, I think they got, it's just looking at, I think they got 66, which was going to sound like not a lot. That sounds like a lot. I know okay. how hard it is. So the target yeah. I gave them was a hundred. So I, I, that was my one thing I said to them that I, th- I think you could have done better. But then they went above and beyond that by taking out um, billboards in London and putting those on like bus stations and really yeah 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 not expensive but I was amazed that actually how cost effective it is to take out um a billboard in London like 100 quid I was really surprised no way I'm gonna do that and and this is a good tactic that they use I was like this is genius is that they're gonna take out the billboards that are right by the offices of each brand and she was like I know that if somebody did that to our brand that my staff would be taking selfies and putting that on. So if we put their face of their episode on a billboard outside their WeWork or wherever they are, I was like that. That's why I'm working with a PR agency, I said. That's why I'm making a podcast for a PR agency. I love it. That's amazing. What, a hundred quid to actually, and and get the material and put it up there? Oh no, it must be, uh, unless it's electronic. Electronic, yeah. yeah. Interesting. We should we should do a billboard on the back of this episode, me and you. There you go. Yeah. 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 That would be cool. It's a good um, idea. All right. I love that. Um, I might need to add that to my marketing list of ideas. I've got I've got a Notion document just with a list of ideas, so that that one gets added on there. Um, I, and I know your pricing with the done with you. That's five nine nine. So you yeah. will you'll break down your strategy. You'll do it with them. You're asking them to do the work. Um, how long do they work with you? Is that 90 days, three months? Correct. Yeah. So basically every other week we would break 
pre-launch, launch, post-launch down with them and give them like up to three tasks to do in those two weeks. We try to do it weekly and we found that you're lucky if somebody completes one task, you know. Oh, yeah, lucky. I think that's reasonable. And um, are you expecting them by the end of the 90 days, if they follow through, if they get everything you want, are you expecting them to rank? Uh, we just did it with somebody you all know, somebody called Gerthro Steenkamp, known as Coach G, yeah. who is a former Rugby World Cup winner with South Africa and now a coach in the, the top rugby league in, in France. Um, yeah, he did that. And I uh, just looked last night. He's number one in another country last night. He's number one in, I think, about six countries, including his homeland in South Africa. And uh, in France, I think it was number two or number three. But if you look at everybody in the chart, and he said he's had phone calls from these companies going, what the hell are you doing? You've launched an English speaking podcast in France and it's in the top three. And everybody else is like a big media player, like Canal Plus and you know all, all of these Eurosport, all of these guys. And they're like, what the hell are you doing in there, man? <laughs> I love it. That's crazy. All right. So guys, if you're looking to grow your podcast, you know where to go. Um, I love this. Absolutely love this. Um, this is almost like a sales call. I feel like you're selling, like it's working. It's working. All right. So past DIY. So that's the third area. So we've talked about, we do it for you. Starting from 1500 to three and a half. You, 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 we do it with you. 599 pounds, mm. by the way, for those watching this. Um, and then the last one is we'll give you a course and you can just do it yourself. How much is that? Yeah, I've fluctuate, fluctuated around with this from like 97 to like 297, you know. Um, and at the moment, I've got it at, at 97. Just that I wanted it kind of like top of funnel for people to to access. Because we've ended up with about, I think, close to 500 people um, requesting like a free. Yeah. But it's not, it's not the course that, it's not the same as the DIY, is it? No. Okay. No. I was about to say that's like super cheap. Yeah. It's like, it's like an introduction. Yeah. And it's even something that you could, you know, somebody else that we know from Club SP Cohen has like a free program and he's had 3,000 people go through it, but 15% of those people will then yeah. ask to work with him. So I have thought about that as well and going, let's just give it away for free. Because I've got like these 500 people that I haven't even sent an email to yet after as a follow up. Yeah, um, I like that approach as well. I've been thinking about that. In fact, I even implemented that earlier this year where I did the five day SEO challenge. And yes, I remember that. Introduced a bunch of people. I charged 50 quid. I've never yeah. done anything that cheap. Um, but, you know, it basically. Did it work? Um, it did to an extent. So there was two or three people that were going, all right, we're considering the higher end course. Um, so we have this course called the Influential Brand Accelerator, which is looking at content, SEO even PR to an extent and going, how do I create content that Google starts to rank? Um, and we had a, a number of people interested. The thing is, as a business, our focus is really on, as you know, is on rightfully where we're launching a copywriting on demand service. And mm. at that point I decided, you know what? I really can't support these people at this stage. So I've kind of put that on hold. Okay. Uh, but I do see the, the core cool thing about uh, the intro product is the fact that especially for people that are hesitant or they're confused with the whole concept like seo is quite confusing the intro product even like your podcasting where you're like introducing them to the steps it's a really good way of just getting them like bought into the concepts and feeling and seeing the power whereas a lot of people they scared of the concept and they don't feel like um they see the value in it. But the minute they went through the five day SEO channel, they were like super engaged. Only 12 people, we stopped at 12 people and six of them all sent me testimonial videos, which is insane. I've never That's had great. that conversion yeah, yeah. on reviews, like mm. as a review conversion. So yeah, I like, I'm, I'm a big fan actually of, of a smaller product. So let's, so we've got, we've got a really good idea here of the different products, podcasting uh, done for you, the done with you and the DIY. Tell me how you're marketing, you know, the, the businesses. And, you know, it sounds like it sounds like your core focus is really around the service. And I'll just add another one in again, just because people were didn't want to go through or perceived in their eyes, I guess, of what, you know, a course. I don't want to invest the time in learning how to do it 
can I pick your brains and yeah. I don't want to pay 599 pounds yeah. me going, okay. And, and seeing somebody like Natty Berners-Goni, which I paid for her services for Instagram going, okay, so why don't we do a two hour consult? So we do that now for like 299 and I haven't marketed it and we've, we've just done a couple, but, um, I wonder whether that's, you know, uh, and again, when I'm looking at the pricing of the course, that kind of leads me to think, let's keep the course at 97 if we're going to be doing like a deep dive two hour, which is like, you know, kind of a, either a deep dive into a particular part yeah. of podcasting, like pre-launch or, okay, we've launched and now, which is a standard one, we can't grow it. Or it's a whistle stop tour of everything, you know? Yeah. That makes sense. Um, and actually, we, we didn't touch on this, and it's all connected, isn't it? But your Screw It, Just Do It podcast, um, go check it out, guys, by the way. You know, mm -hmm. clearly um, Alex has been doing this for a long time, and it's got some awesome guests. Um, you. But your Screw It, Screw It, Just Do It podcast, you've got a sponsor, haven't you? So you're, you're making money from that. Tell us about that. Oh yeah, I completely forgot about that. And I've just lined up another um, brand partnership for the autumn with a venture capital firm that approached me who are rebranding. Um, Love it. And they like invest in, invested in like Revolut and a load of these um, All right. yeah, big yeah. brands like that. So, th so they're great. Um, yeah, so that's even bigger ticket. So there you go. That's, um, that's six grand a month. Okay. I've scaled that up from charging three grand a month. Wow. Um, just again, all I've done with that is push the envelope because we had a bunch of offers on the table, which all came through Clubhouse. I had um, three offers on the table and I wasn't necessarily playing them off against each other, but I was literally just trying to find out, okay, well, how much is somebody willing to pay? Because I'm just shooting in the dark. Yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Otherwise. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, at the moment oh, we're thanks. getting £5,000 a month and the next one's going to be £6,000 a month. Um, what does that include? What, what do you give them? Yeah, I kind of gone above and beyond, to be honest with you, um, in that they just want me to what's called a pre-roll or a mid-roll or a post-roll, which is the obvious advertising three obvious obvious three obvious advertising opportunities within a podcast. Yeah, and they just want me to shout out the business essentially. But you know what we've done is yes, we'll do that. And I'll do that twice on that podcast. Ultimately, you could probably in, in the US do it quite a lot. You get two or three different brands on there. I, yeah. I think that's a lot of mixed messaging yeah. personally. So we do that, but then we would also put links in the show notes um, for that brand. We then redo all of our artwork, our audiograms, our video clips, and their name is, um, their brand is essentially in that. And we will tag them in every single social media post that we do with like a couple of lines of, as to why you'd want to use them. I also get them to um, put guests forward mm. and interview some of their guests. Because again, that's part of the relationship for me is that they're going to have fantastic guests, which both of them have had. Um, I'm trying to think what else we do, but yeah, uh, email marketing, social media, the podcast itself, and to do a clubhouse room with them, with some of the guests they suggested. So I kind of gone above and beyond either, and then offer them to, if they've got a podcast, I'll offer that to give them yeah. some help on the podcast. That's amazing. I mean, that's, that's, um, that's what, um, 72 grand a year. Just, I know. just massive isn't it it's just well it, it is literally led to me to having some of those moments as, as things get complicated with clients launches yeah. going do you know what i could do here i could just have a, a, a comfortable life just recording one hour a me yeah just having just a chat with someone i like once a week and recording that conversation and not doing anything else and have a really comfortable life yeah just just living on the beach side and jumping into cold water every morning right 100 percent yeah, you know, you, you know, you, yeah, I love it. Um, how many, so how many podcasts do you do a month? Um, two a week. So yeah, average 12 a month. Okay. So they're getting on every 12. Yeah. So we do a trailer, a main Q and a on a Wednesday and then a solo episode with me. So three a week, essentially. So 12. So they're getting on 
12. And as someone suggested, you could break that down and have a sponsor for each one of those shows. And I was like, ha ha, that's a really yeah. good suggestion. Yeah, that's what I, I was immediately just thinking. That I thought you were, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going there. All right, tell us about your marketing. Okay, so um, up until January 2021, <laughs> I would be focused on LinkedIn in all honesty. And I would be, you know, one, my initial marketing strategy. Okay. So to wind it back, my initial marketing strategy when I started this podcast was actually the people I was interviewing. Mm. And I discovered that by accident, but now it's the number one tactic that I teach people to mm. use when starting a podcast. Hence like the PR agency going, this is fantastic. We've, we've had so many PR agencies contact us wanting to host their clients, which is hilarious because we are a podcast. We are a PR agency. <laughs> And I was like, you can turn that to your advantage. He's like, I know I can, um, and take their clients off their hands. So um, for me, it was going back to the people I'd interviewed who already knew, like, and trusted me and had that relationship. Now I use it as part of that conversation. Oh, by the way, have you got your own podcast? Are you thinking about marketing via audio? Yeah. Um, so that's how I initially got the first client signed up. Then it was going into LinkedIn and looking at um, – contacting the directors of marketing and the heads of marketing for, you know, similar brands. And initially I was kind of focused on the F and B space, but ultimately once I started getting inquiries from nail brands to zoos, I was like, do you know what? We don't need to focus right now. <laughs> we can just say yes to anybody we can help. Um, so LinkedIn outreach, um, you know, did that work LinkedIn? It worked, but not to the, remotely to the degree that I wanted in that I then contacted a bunch of people I knew who were using different services where, you know, you would get sent. Um, I actually interviewed Bonjour, Bonjouro, Bonjourno, where you get like a personalized video, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So I've, I've looked at that. I should probably revisit that because I've literally just bailed on LinkedIn and only started going back in the last couple of weeks to post, but I haven't done any mm um outreach on there but yeah literally there and then um through cultivating during lockdown um a facebook group mm -hmm. um and email marketing so before back when we used to do events used to sell out events you know through um through my emails and through the podcast the course as well that's been through a few iterations um that's worked well and i mean literally it all changed this year um through being dragged kicked and screaming onto this new thing called clubhouse and literally just doing what i do now talk about what i know podcasting and related conversations and as if by magic because for those who don't know clubhouse your profile you can connect to your instagram account and or to your Twitter account. And as if by magic, people were then literally messaging me going, can you make me a podcast? And me going, wow, if I speak more, I get more inquiries. This is insane. I feel like that's um, what you do. It's your pod you're podcasting just on a different platform, aren't you? Exactly. That's literally what I'm doing is live podcasting. That's literally what I'm doing, I think. Um, so yeah, it's completely changed now. It's completely changed. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Are you... Are you tracking how many new purchases you're getting per week just from Clubhouse? Yeah, and they're literally, at the moment, I've just focused all of our efforts on Clubhouse and Instagram and that whole uh, sequence, that whole, yeah, marketing funnel, essentially, of... You know, me yeah. speaking, what's written in my profile, what are we offering people, um, then how are we messaging people in Instagram, where are we then sending them from Instagram. And it's that whole thing about, you know, building a community on a platform and not wanting them to stay on that platform because at any moment you can lose that community with the whims of the algorithm or get banned. We've, we've seen people get banned on there. I've seen people get banned from their own Facebook groups. So yeah. trying to build a community off that platform where you found that community, but giving them a reason to leave. Um, and yeah, I, I would say at the moment, literally 80, 85% are from Clubhouse and then the other 15% is gonna be referrals and conversations that I had, you know, going back pre 
lockdown that are now seeing the impact of audio and coming back and going, can we pick up the conversation? Our business has recovered. We want to go back into marketing through audio. So, yeah. So, um, uh, and before we look at your sales strategy so, and your messaging, so what does, um, if you look at, since you've been on Clubhouse, how many customers in total roughly have you have you got just from Clubhouse? Um, that we've actually, that we've that have actually we've delivered or are working with at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, you know, they've paid, they've paid with their credit card. Yeah, I should probably know that figure, but I don't just because again, yesterday we had um, two people sign up in one day yesterday, which is like wow. fantastic. Um, uh, I would say probably, you know, 20 new clients wow. in five months, um, which is probably not as much as I, as it sounds, but when they're paying, you know, substantial, oh, I think a substantial amount of money for some people it might be, well, what's three grand. That's nothing. But um, you, no, but you, that, you that, again, some of those are recurring. Some of it, those are one off. Precisely. Um, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. That's awesome. Um, and then you talked about like the messaging. So we, we, we've looked at your marketing, um, you're prioritizing Clubhouse, Instagram referrals. Tell us about like once they show interest, walk us through how they how you actually make the sale. What does that look like? Yeah, I've just been through this and been advised that it's not sustainable, which I know it's not really. <laughs> but I, you know, when and I know everybody needs to get over this fact, but you know when you know that you're the best person at this particular yeah. part of the job. And for me, I used to hate sales i used to my first ever business that i launched online it went we literally just launched literally launched it and and the set oh you literally was just like ping 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 and it was all these people requesting yeah. a, a call which was the sales call and i actually employed somebody to do that and i literally hid behind the sofa and got my wife to do it it literally scared <laughs> the shit out of me whereas now i know that um you know my close rate before when i was in the health and fitness business my close rate it was only one client i never closed to like a, a package, like upsold them into a package. So I know that I'm still the best person to do this, but ultimately I need to get someone to take over this part so I can then take the step back and focus on the growth. But um, at the moment, it, it, it the process works. Um, I do a live podcast like this. I talk, um, people DM me on Instagram, on Instagram, um, I take the conversation off Instagram um, by asking for their um their, their phone number and then it's sharing our uh, deck with them the different ways that we can um, support them so done for you done with you etc and then it's scheduling a call because it never it, what I found is that people want to essentially talk through either done for you versus done with you or uh, done with you versus consultation so it's a it's a price point initially for, for, for everybody. Um, so, and, and that, that is, that is literally the process. As, as soon as we, we have agreement there through the phone call, um, we would then send out via DocuSign, try and make it, you know, as quick and as seamless as possible, send out a DocuSign so they can electronically sign the letter of engagement. Um, then, you know, they get links to all of the assets, and a link to, to book that first to call in with our lead uh, podcast strategist, which used to be me, but that's one role. Again, I've realized that other you're people on, can do. You're on to bigger things, but I mean, honestly, as you grow the business, your time needs to be spent on the strategic things and Correct. marketing and like, it's hard to outsource Clubhouse, right? Um, yeah. Because if you can introduce a bunch of customers and spend your time there, then you can kind of, the, the rest of the stuff over time just becomes instructions, don't they, and procedures. And then you just need someone who's good at thinking through that. So that's mm. really interesting. Thanks for breaking that down. And I know we've gone slightly over on time. So um, before I show this diagram where I've uh, summarized into my Picasso, your business and, and model, um, you know, for those budding entrepreneurs who are looking to grow and take their business whether it's from nothing to five figures or five figures to six figures and multiple figures after that what's the, what's the one thing that's you know that you would you would tell that person 
one thing I would tell that person who's looking to, to grow their business from whatever to whatever, essentially. Essentially. Um, it's something you've alluded to already, to be honest with you, and it's a conversation I had yesterday, uh, which is, you know, work out what you're good at and what you enjoy mm. and focus on that get help for everything else, leverage other people's time, whether for example, they need help with copywriting or SEO from somebody like yourself or building them, you know, building a website or they've, they've come to the conclusion that podcasting is the way forward and they, and they need to have a podcast to mar market their business via audio, get somebody who's got skills in that game to do it for you. Um, because otherwise I, I just, I've just learned the hard way trying to do everything and everyone bootstraps to a certain degree to start with. I, I totally get that. But I think as soon as you reach that point that you can actually work out that you can pay somebody um, less money to accomplish the same task and that frees you up to make more money, make the switch. And for a lot of people, it's like a VA or a PA is the first thing. And that can be one hour a day, five hours a week. Mm you know, literally 20 hours, a 20 hours a month that might cost you, I don't know, 25 pound a week. You know, you, you could, you could do it really, really cheaply. And even if it's just like the admin to start with an hour a day, yeah. but that, that would be my advice for anybody. I've just learned that the hard way. Just, just get help as soon as possible. Cause otherwise you've just bought yourself another job. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. Um, yeah. I've learned that the hard way as well. And uh, honestly, if you're listening to this and going, yeah, but that person's not going to be able to do my job the way yeah. I can do it. As soon as you have that thought, delete it. Because honestly, you'll be surprised at what people can do and you'll be surprised. Actually, they could probably do it better than you. I've just found that out um, yesterday. We've, um, we're working on a new brand launch uh, as a side project of our team. And I've been, I've been hammering myself with this domain name and the brand name and the the strategy for weeks and I must have spent 20 plus hours on it and we had an idea we said why don't we just get our team involved why don't we just set aside two days for an entire team to strategize brainstorm and ideate the brand the tagline the 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 tone of voice the style the strategy even the brand name the domain name and honestly they've blown my mind Mm. And I've gone, I went into our Slack channel yesterday in our management group. And I said, I can't believe I've wasted 20 hours on this when our team has just done, have just got better ideas. And uh, on the back of that, we're actually thinking, why don't we just offer this as a service as part of our brand, yeah. uh, you know, up-level your brand service, which is a whole different thing. Um, but yeah, you just, the, 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 the opportunity is just give, or the summary is just to give people a chance. So I love that advice. So let me, let me switch the screen and um, and show you this Picasso of mine of how you make money. So here That's we- That's why you wanted my picture. There you go. Is why I wanted your picture as well as for the thumbnail as well. But um, this mm. is how Alex Chisnell makes money today, guys. So we've got Podpreneur, it's .co.uk. He has a done for you service where he starts from 1,500 to three and a half thousand pounds depending on um, whether that client wants a one-off or a monthly service and the number of podcasts you know, they're, they're, they're looking for, as well as a done with you program over 90 days where he um, does this over five, where he charges 599 and that's having two calls every two weeks, so very reasonable. Um, I can, I'll send you this, Alex, as well, just um, in case you want it. I could see you taking a picture. Yeah. Um, um, but it, Alex also has a beginner's uh, program where he has a 97 product, 97 pound product for um, for people that want to take it, take his podcast training themselves. It's just an introduction product. And then he has two hour consults uh, at 299. Um, that's just one off ad hoc basis. And then lastly, which is super cool, he, he clearly has a successful product, a podcast called Screw It, Just Do It. 
and he currently has a podcast sponsor paying him 5,000, but that's going to 6,000 per month and they get a ton of value for that. And I'm sure Alex is gonna increase that price. So those are all Alex's products. And what I love about what Alex does is it's super focused on the podcast. He not only does it, but he also offers it, right? And that's all he does. Um, and so you know, over the years, as he's grown the business from five figures, as you grow, mature the business, find opportunities, organically he's just grown 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 and has almost like carved a really cool niche and has become at the you know has established himself i would say at the top of that niche as a podcast agency how does alex get customers well here's here's how he gets customers clubhouse linkedin podcast interviews interviewees that's something he just fell onto actually interviewing customers or potential customers just like I'm interviewing Alex. Alex could become a potential customer for rightfully afterwards um, and, and vice versa. Facebook groups. Uh, Alex is now building a community. He's got an email list. He's got Instagram referrals. But there's two things that are working really, really well for Alex. And that's Clubhouse. Um, there's no surprise why. And then also Instagram. Think about Clubhouse. It's intensive. He's spending at least a day a week on Clubhouse because he told me this just before we jumped onto this interview. And it is intensive. But here's the thing, it's landing clients. Over the last five months, it's introduced 20 clients. Now, those could be, some of those will be one-off purchases and others will be recurring. And those are people that are coming back, coming back and even jumping onto Clubhouse going, Alex is awesome and they're supporting Alex. And he's getting testimonials. He's getting real people just like he shared here. Like that blew my mind actually. Honestly, that took me over the edge. Mm. Uh, where I was like, oh, wow, you're you're killing it with against people who have got a podcast, Eric Sue, you know, all these people that have had a podcast for a number of years, and now you're at the top, you're competing with them. And so that's how Alex gets clients, is he spends the time in marketing and he's outsourced, not outsourced, but, you know, he's got team, he's hiring team to help him take over the things that actually he doesn't need to do anymore, right? He needs to start bringing his um, mindset and um, efforts to a higher level on the strategy side or the marketing side. Um, and what does Alex's sales strategy look like? I, I'm really happy he broke this down for us. So he gets a ton of messages on Instagram. He gets people DMing him. He, he asks for their phone number. He might jump on a call. He might ask for their email address and then have email messages. And he'll, the main thing is he sends a deck over. And I like that because before getting on a call, you, you want to qualify people, you right. You want to make yeah. sure they're the right fit and, and they they can self-choose what option they want because these are all different options. He'll then schedule a call, walk through that, decide on the option to go through, and then it's pretty much straightforward. A DocuSign contract or letter of engagement, as you put it, an invoice, and then the assets sent over to them to book their first call and jump on to their service. So, Alex, is, is there anything here that you would change? And you're right with the pre-qualifying, fully enough, because that's what I've, I've worked out is that I then need to just double check with someone before I jump on that call. Just want to make sure you've read the deck because I ended up jumping in a call with someone and they're like, so tell me what the benefits of podcasting. And I was like, oh my God, that is not the purpose of this call to spend an hour with you converting you to actually oh. understand the power of podcast. That is not, that's what you should be on clubhouse for, you know, listening to me oh, at that, that first moment. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think the only thing I would, I would, I would change would be ultimately to scale is to try and automate the, you know, the sales part of it. Um, and then I think, like we've already said, and I, and I don't know, you know, some of the big guns like John Lee and Rob Moore, how, how do you get help with marketing on, on Clubhouse? Um, you know, you can't fake your own voice, but do you bring, you know, minions on who then you start the room and then you hand over to the minions who, who know, you know, what, you, you, you know, you've taught them all of your knowledge, you know, and, and for me, that's like my, my podcast strategist, yeah. you know, they've been through my course, they've been through my coaching and ultimately they've become um, employees of the company. So could they do that? Yes. I've got them to do that before. Like when I, but I it hasn't been a deliberate strategy. They've done that when I've oh, shit, the room's run over. I've got to go. Can you take over the room? And then like they have, but it, it's that thing again, isn't it? Where people come for you after a while because you've built up, 
the following and and you know the kudos etc so yeah and and you know probably one other thing i would just add here is like that's been the benefit with the marketing is that whereas before i was only working with businesses in the uk i'm now working with businesses from singapore to south florida that's insane just landed client in australia two weeks ago who are the leading podcast agency in australia and i just thought hang on aren't they a competitor but when i actually had the conversation they're actually just a production agency not uh-huh. just, but they who work with like they quit po- they quit the podcast for like Alibaba, you know, like the world's biggest bloody companies, yeah. and they wanted my help because they don't know how to launch or grow a podcast, and I was like gobsmacked. But they know production inside out; they just don't know. So I'm like, yeah, what do I call that? A consultation, but you know, that's that's a retainer every month. That's very nice to have as well um, that I've just signed up for. So. There's another part I should have, there you go. I should have added that to it. <laughs> that yeah, needs to go that, in there. We? Yeah, we missed that. Well, I literally just remember that now. Well, this is, is, I mean, that technically we didn't because that falls under to the consult, although right. we called that a two hour consult. But yeah, we could, we could rename that to be a consultation, right? Um, yeah. And potentially recurring as well as the one off. So yeah, this yeah. is, this is awesome. One question for you, actually, when you talked about automating the sales, um, you've got some powerful results, right, for clients. Yeah. And yeah. Um, the results is one thing. And actually just being able to create the podcast, I think, is a result in itself. You're, like, helping people efficiently get there. And the result is sometimes a bonus because people are getting tons of value anyway without it ranking, right? Mm-hmm. But how hard, are you, how hard are you playing the results in terms of number one on this, number one, like this PR agency? Are you screenshotting that, putting that in your... In yeah. your deck, are you doing interviews with them or are you getting testimonials? Yeah, it, it, funnily that? enough, it's literally being updated now as we're talking because the, the, we've updated the deck and, and then I've looked at it and gone, do you know what? We need to update all the case studies because yeah. they're even more powerful this year than what we did last year. So we're doing that right now. And um, I've just noticed the person that I hired just to work on my Instagram, she must have seen me doing a room on how to get a number one ranked podcast. And she's added three slides to my Instagram stories, which illustrate how I do that. And I was like that. She's like, she read my mind and she's added it. Cause I've done the story going, I'm about to do a room on this. And then she's yeah. then gone, here are three graphics, you know, that she'd created and that she'd put out as a, um, a carousel, I think mm-hmm. with all the brand colors. So mm-hmm. I was like, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that is cool. I can see, I'm checking it out as we speak. Uh, okay. Um, so you've got, I can see a cat, you've got Apple Podcasts, Costa Rica, and a number one, uh, Jenna Kutcher, uh, still trailing behind. That's that's really cool. It's mad, isn't it? That's mad. And, and she posted it, I had to say, my client posted it yes, last night and I clocked it. Um, so and cool. I was like, that's brilliant. Love it. That is brilliant. So look, thank you so much for spending the time to break down your business and um give us all the 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 juicy details um as well as the tip at the end so very lastly where can people find you people can't find me via my own podcast screw it just do it yeah um and then i'm alex chisnell underscore on instagram if people want to again request a copy of our free launch checklist it's the word launch. Um, yeah, so just DM me over there. And again, it's just my name on every other platform, Alex Chisnell on LinkedIn, etc. Amazing. Thanks, Alex. Really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Enjoyed it. Thank you.